Hey everybody, what's up? It's Jasmine. Recently I've been watching this TV show on Swedish TV called Lix Fallon, which is about people who get into a lot of debt. So it'll be like normal everyday families that have heaps and heaps of debt. Uh, some of them have as much as like $200,000 and they're obviously really stressed out and it's just like an awful situation. But the crazy thing is, is that oftentimes they have really weird spending habits like this one family they had bought a car a brand new car and neither of them had a driving license and so their thinking was that their friend could drive would drive them places if they needed to but like why would you buy a whole new brand new car just to have your friend drive you when you wanted to so they had spent so much money and they hadn't sold the car because obviously the car's not worth as much now but the thing is is that they were so much in debt that it's better off for them to sell the car because for them to get a driver's license they're gonna have to go even more into debt so basically they're holding on to the car for like the sunk cost fallacy that they've already put so much money into it and then they would lose so much but they've lost so much already so it was like what and then there was this other lady and she uh she's a single mum and she lived in a smallish apartment with her son who's quite young and while she was on the tv show she told them that she was going to move to another apartment that was even more expensive um and she was doing that just because it had an extra room but like her what they said on the show was that like your son doesn't care about how much space is in the apartment. He cares about having a mum that doesn't have so much anxiety because she's in so much debt. So she still had to end up moving to that other apartment because she'd already signed the contract. But it's just crazy to think that you know that you're in so much debt and you're just going to keep on, keep on digging, <laughs> keep on digging. And that was, it was really sad because, you know, these people like, they were so stressed out and they couldn't sleep and they were worried all the time and you can understand that like I even feel anxious just thinking about like am I going to meet my savings goals or um, what happens if in the future I don't have a job you know like I get worried imagining uh, you know thinking about imaginary hard monetary hardships right um, so I can't even imagine what it's like when you actually have a huge debt over you and there was this other family and the husband he didn't have a job and he, he was he was saying that he was he's already worked before so he doesn't want to start off in a job where he's been paid the minimum wage but at the moment he's earning nothing so he would be earning a lot more than nothing by having a job so that one was that one's sad, but I've heard that one quite a bit before on these sorts of TV shows where people, they they want a job that pays them what they're worth, right? And oftentimes you're worth more than what you're being paid, right? But you're better off having however many dollars an hour than no dollars an hour. Um, so he actually, he got a job on the show, but then he quit it or maybe they didn't hire him uh, full time I don't know but so then he didn't have a job and it was really sad because you would think that people in that situation would do everything that they could do um, but he was like he was choosing not to because just because I guess because of his pride and because obviously working's hard but at the same time you know you're in this situation and you've got kids and you've got a family why wouldn't you do something that's maybe beneath you just to try and get out from under the hole that you've dug yourself in and also that like that same guy he was also doing online gambling a lot so he was spending so much money a month on online gambling money that he didn't even earn <laughs> so how like <laughs> Yeah, that was ridiculous. He was probably one of the more ridiculous ones. There was this other lady who 
she would buy she would go out shopping all the time and she'd buy like new clothes and things like that and it was just so weird yeah <laughs> and they would get upset when the tv hosts would tell them like you know you got to think about your kids and their future and how stressful financial hardship is on the children and the family and then they'd get really upset like hey you you calling me a bad mom and stuff like that and it's like like you're just making bad decisions and they want to show you how that affects the kids because it's not just you who can't sleep at night because of anxiety but when kids know that there's hardship in the family even if you try and hide it from them it's gonna make them anxious and that's not good like kids need to feel as safe as they can and if they feel like they might get kicked out of their home because they can't afford to pay rent that's not a good situation so anyway I think the show is really interesting I like watching it because it helps me learn Swedish but it's often quite sad though the endings are usually really good because at the end they get a budget um, they sell off lots of things that they own like the car for example pay down some of the debts and then they like help the people work on paying their debts off every month because a lot of the time they won't even open their mail so they don't even know that they have um, amount, a, an, an amount to pay off every month so then that stacks up and then they get more bills and things like that so yeah I think the program is really good because it it does help people but I also feel like it'd be good if those sorts of resources were available uh, without being on TV right <sighs> but yeah Whew. it's hard I'm glad I'm not in that situation anyway let me know what you guys think down below and I'll see you guys all next time hey door